YouTube. This is Ty Metalhead Weatherman. Hopefully you guys are doing well. So, uh, in light of the uh, recent um, severe weather outbreak that happened yesterday, we've been tracking that one for a while. I uh, ended up not being able to do this video that I'm doing today. Also, a little. I'm also going to briefly talk about what happened yesterday. So it looked like originally at first it was going to be mainly a tornado outbreak, and it, it was a small one, but it was overall it was a, a big severe weather outbreak overall more so than anything else. Tornadoes were a big factor, and a few towns were hit, and unfortunately there were a couple lives that were lost in uh, western Alabama. Keep those thoughts and keep those people in your thoughts and prayers. But um, ultimately, as bad as it was, it could have been a whole lot worse. Um, I'm sure that uh, eventually there will be some uh, some uh, reason that it wasn't that way from a meteorological standpoint. Right now, I'm not even too sure of it myself. Based off of what I saw in the models, it, it looked like a nightmare scenario, and a lot of meteor a lot of uh, meteorologists were thinking the same thing. Whatever the case, it wasn't. I wouldn't call it a. Uh, it definitely wasn't what you call a blue sky bust. Only uh, if you were a if you were somebody in the weather community, especially in the storm chasing community, you know what that term means. But it definitely wasn't that. It's just kind of odd. But I guess at the end of the day, I really would consider that something to be, be grateful for. But anyways, enough talking about um, Tuesday. Let's go ahead and get into our outlook for December here. So we can pretty much look at both of these maps, but we're going to start out with, uh, excuse me, we, we can uh, start out looking at the uh, temperature map here. I was going to look at, um, I was going to try to look at them both at the same time, but I'd rather give you a better picture here. So of course the uh, areas in the blue are going to be areas that will are likely to see below average temperatures throughout the month of December and then the areas in the orange and more towards the red colors are going to be areas that could be expecting above average temperatures throughout the month. One thing I want to keep in mind here, especially as we look at these uh, monthly temperature outlooks, these are not set in stone. For one, and then secondly, these aren't indicative of the temperatures you will see every day for 30 days. That's just not how it works. This is based off an average of the temperatures you could be expected to see within 30 days. And this is based on an average that's usually done over somewhere between 10 to 50 years. So it's it fluctuates. It's very variable. So just because you happen to be in an area that's above average on uh, temperatures or having drier precipitation than average, it doesn't mean that you're going to be bone dry or sitting at 70 degrees in the middle of um, December. You could literally have a few days that, or a couple of weeks that could be like that, but it doesn't mean that every day will be like that. Even if you're in an area like this over here, where we're looking at a uh, 70 to 80 percent chance of being below average, I would understand your concern then. But even then, I think there's still going to be a few days where they're going to be a little bit warm, maybe not above average by about 10 degrees, but they're not going to be exactly 30 degrees below average every single day. But this place is going to this place is generally cold during this time of year, so it's not a surprise there. This is over towards uh North Dakota, parts of uh Minnesota and uh Montana. The high confidence definitely uh just spreads uh, ah, spreads throughout the uh, northwest and in towards the uh UP and Michigan, and even towards a couple of the Great Lakes. We start to get into that slightly lower confidence, but we're still confident that it's going to be uh, below average when we get into the Ohio Valley over towards the interior northeast, uh, starting to get into the Midwest here, and then towards uh, central California, towards the Sierras. We get into the uh, white area, which is our equal chance area and also an area that we're probably going to see a lot of storminess because wherever we have those two two air masses clashing that's where we tend to have pretty active weather so this stretches through a pretty good chunk of the country actually all the way up the uh, east coast all the way up a good chunk of the east coast 
we could be expecting uh, an equal chance. And then the same can be said throughout the Red River Valley, some parts, some parts of the Mississippi River base, Basin and towards maybe the southern parts of the Rockies. I'll have to see what happens with that. And then, interestingly enough, Alaska is actually looking above average here. How about that? The uh, western half of Alaska actually has pretty high confidence of being above average, about 60 to 70 percent chance. And then as we get further towards uh, the east part of Alaska, that's when we can be expecting a little bit below average temperatures. Not much, though. That cold air will eventually look to be pushing further to the south. So I do think at some point, some of these regions that are in the equal chance to uh, slightly above average could see some uh, variation in temperatures. Now that we've looked at that. Here's the precipitation outlook, and this is also something that's very telling, and you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. So, but, for example, this this isn't surprising. This tends to happen during this time of year. Nothing uh, too far out of the ordinary. It's good to see this, though, however. This, uh, this uh, greater confidence of above average uh, precip over towards the Sierra Nevadas. There's been a, few, there's been a couple of years here where this area has been really dry, not getting a lot of snowfall. The, ski, the uh, ski resorts around here have been suffering. So the fact that we're seeing uh, above average precip and uh, below average temperatures, it's a good sign for these guys. Very happy for them. We can also see that Alaska has an above average uh, precip area, especially off towards the west. It's a little bit drier towards the east and the south. But um, this is the area that I want you to take note of here. I've been seeing something in the forecast models in the midst of me uh, looking through the uh, severe weather threat, I've been noticing a lot of activity over this area. And I'm partially concerned about flash flooding. Again, I'm going to go into greater detail a little bit later in the video. But um, if you're over towards Tennessee and uh, Kentucky, you might want to be watching the weather. Maybe preparing for a potential flood threat. Because I do think of quite a few storm systems are going to be rolling over this region over the next couple of weeks. And then, of course, we have our below average areas and equal chance areas. During the first half of this month, I'm starting to think that the uh, jet stream is going to be pushing a little further to the north. So these regions may get missed a lot with some of the uh, incoming storm systems. Florida definitely will be. This will kind of shut off the Gulf of Mexico moisture momentarily. I do think it'll eventually come back and we'll start to get some uh, some increased precipitation around here even. But over towards uh, desert southwest and in towards western Texas, this I do expect you guys to be a little bit dry. but Or at least for the first half of this month, maybe a little bit dry. Again, these aren't set in stone and this is not going to be an everyday thing for the next 30 days so we'll just have to see how things progress with this so let's start to get a little bit more in depth with with uh, December here towards the first half of, towards the first half of this month it looks like the uh, negative PNA is going to start to set in we're going to be a little bit cooler towards the west more so than anywhere else but we do see a bigger Arctic plunge possibly coming in towards the northern half of the country Hence why there's such high confidence that there's going to be below average temperatures towards the northern tier of the U.S. Then over towards the northeast, we have some confidence of there being uh, below average temperatures as well. We also have a ridge building up to the uh, southern half of the country. Hence why we have such high confidence in there being above average temperatures, especially towards south Georgia, south, southern Alabama, and into almost all of Florida where we're sitting close to a 70% chance of above average temperatures. We'll get into the we'll get into the uh, temperature anomalies in a little bit. But the further east you go, the confidence starts to uh, lessen a little bit. When we look through the uh precip for day 6 through 10 though, again, there's that area that I've been talking about right here. And this is an area that we're going to have to be watching over the next couple of days for a lot of storm activity. Some of it could be severe, but I'm definitely leaning towards just thunderstorms rolling over the same area over and over. And you know, and it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out the more saturated ground the uh, ground gets around this region, 
less water it can take in and then flooding can become a problem so this is an area of interest right here slightly above average uh, precip over here towards the northeast too they're going to they're going to be catching uh the tail ends of these storm systems that'll be coming through this region it's going to be like almost like a little train of moisture that just keeps and uh storm systems that just keeps on funneling through this region here and the same can be said towards the uh northwest here and really any of these areas here in the white have an equal chance of seeing an above or below average uh week of precipitation or over the next six to ten days when we go through days 8 through 14, though, things kind of get interesting where this cold air has started to push a little bit further south now. And as a result, a lot more areas, especially towards the southeast, are going to start to be below average. It almost kind of has to look like a trough is starting to try to develop on the eastern half of the country. Although we also can see that there is quite a trough that's dug into the western half. Although I do think this may eventually end up migrating more towards the east. We'll have to see how that uh uh, progresses there but the uh, you can definitely tell the warm sector is kind of tapered off a little bit here we'll have to watch this region right here in the white because wherever these two air collision these two air masses tend to collide where they're where those collisions end up occurring is where we're likely to get thunderstorms some of which could be severe of course but uh, there's quite a few pockets here where we're going to be having increased confidence of below average temperatures one area is towards Delmarva here and this will be right in time for Christmas, too, if this holds up. We'll have to see how things progress with that because that's pretty far out. We're starting to get pretty far out here. We're getting 8 to 14 days. Confidence won't be as high as far as storm systems will be concerned, but it's definitely something to pay attention to. Still loving this right here for this region right here towards the Sierra Nevada because, again... This place has had some really rough years in regards to um, in regards to uh, snow seasons, but this looks like this could be a year that makes up for a good bit of that. Look at the uh, days eight through fourteen precip, and that's exactly what we want. That's exactly what we will be seeing over there. There's another plume of moisture over here towards uh, Texas over here. And keep in mind, this is an area that was highlighted to be below average here. So, like I said. Depending on how these storm systems perform, it could uh, chuck that uh, monthly outlook out the window. Interestingly enough as well, this area looks like they're going to be a below average next week in regards to uh, precipitation. So we'll have to see how that progresses as well, but interesting development there. Large part of the country is looking like they could be either at an equal chance or average precipitation. And then look at Florida starting to get back into the uh, precipitation action here as well. So let's go ahead and actually take a look at what our storm tracks could be like. What are uh, jet streams doing at the uh, higher levels of the atmosphere? Okay, there we go. I was about to say this thing decided to freeze on me already. Sheesh. So here we are looking at the euro. This is a 12Z euro. It's the only way I can see pretty far out right now. The 18Z euro only goes out to 90 hours. And if we look over here, this is our current storm system that was responsible for the severe weather outbreak. It's moving out right now, bringing gusty winds over towards the northeast. But by, by a Thursday night, it is out of here. Then here's our next storm system coming in. It's positively tilted. Normally when you see these systems be positively tilted, they can be relatively benign. But every once in a while, you'll see something crazy come out of those. This does try to take a little bit of a neutral tilt. And I do think some snow could be possible around the far northern reaches of the country. But I think this is going to be more of a Canadian type storm than U.S. storm at the moment. So this will roll out to the northeast. Might bring some rain over there as well for the weekend. And then we'll have to start looking around this part of the trough, this part of our uh, jet stream here for these little short wave troughs that develop in these small little pieces of energy, which are going to be bringing in rain to the Tennessee and Kentucky regions. And you can kind of see these little pieces of energy highlighted here. 
And then here's our next short wave, and this kind of will just draw a nice little plume of moisture right about here, and it's just going to keep on feeding into this region over and over again. Uh-oh, starting to freeze here. Okay, we're good, we're good. But yeah, you can clearly see that there's multiple pieces of energy that end up flowing in through here. And then towards the 10th, we start to get a little bit more of an interesting look here. Jet stream looks like it's going to try to start digging a little bit further south here. And we'll have to see what what uh, com becomes of that. But that's what the euro is looking like. Let's go ahead and take a look at what the uh, GFS is looking like now. Oops, I clicked the wrong thing here. I'm trying to set this back up as well. Oops. All right, while that's doing that, let's go ahead and look at the GFS and compare the vorticities here. Plus, we'll be able to look a little further with this. Okay, so here we are looking at the GFS here. This does a lot better on uh, Pivotal Weather, but it doesn't have as good a definition as... Uh, or it does better on uh, Tropical Tidbits, but it doesn't give as good of a high resolution look as the pivotal weather so that's why I don't always use that just in case anyone's wondering but um, it's pretty much a similar look through the uh, first 90 hours here oops went a little too far too quickly I should say but uh, you can see these little short pieces of energy that end up going through the uh, Tennessee Valley here and then towards the Ohio Valley this may look like a this looks like a potentially impressive storm system but i still think it's going to be pretty far north so i think most of the snow is going to be north of the border here again here's uh, more pieces of energy towards the southeast towards tennessee and kentucky which is why i'm concerned about a flood threat happening here and towards the 10th and the 11th that's when we start to see a little bit of a trough starting to develop here starting to dig a little bit more and this will start to bring much colder temperatures into the southeast here. And this almost has the look of a nor'easter trying to set up here for the 13th. Keep in mind we're 294 hours out, so a lot of uncertainty with this, but looks like there's some pretty pretty significant cold air with this as well. And if the timing is right, this could turn into a big snowstorm, but the track is going to determine everything with this. But this moves out, and then some cold air really starts to come in, rushing behind it just in time for the middle of the month. And we'll have to see how things progress with that. So, and then there's another big storm system right behind there. We'll have to watch that one really closely. Of course, this is 384 hours out, so it's going to be kind of hard to uh, pinpoint anything or hone in on anything particularly, because we're pretty much in no man's land at this point. So we'll get this set up here. We'll get the uh, temperature anomaly set up with the GFS and start making our comparisons there. But this is what we're looking at right now with the Euro. A lot of areas around here are going to be uh, 10 to 15 degrees above average in the south and east. And the lows actually are going to be slightly below average. Nothing too far out of the ordinary. Of course, a cold front is going through, has gone through this area recently, so we'll have a couple of days with that. Good surge of warm air right here that's developed around uh, the Rockies, but this will be pushing off to the east shortly. In fact, there it is right there. And then here comes a big, here comes that big surge of cold air that we were talking about when we were looking at the uh, CPC outlook towards the 6th. We're looking at temperatures that could be 20 to 30 degrees below average in that region. And we're starting to settle into that uh, negative PNA right into the beginning of next week here. And it's not a super strong one. We have one that's set up to where it's about maybe 10, 15, some places maybe even 20 degrees below average. But it's not really, I think, until the middle of that week where things really start to uh, be sitched in here. Over towards the south and east, we're looking like we're 10 to 15. Somewhere, some areas 20 degrees below, above average, excuse me. And over towards the north, that's when we're starting to get into those 20 degree 
20 to 30 degree below average areas. But yeah, everything's kind of just fluctuating around here. And uh, look at this area towards uh, about 216 hours out towards the night. Big area where we could be 20 to 30 degrees below average. There's no really uh, large disparity between the temperatures, so I'm not really worried about severe weather in this region. It's just going to be unseasonably warm in some areas. And then, of course, this locks, in, locks itself in over the southeast and then over towards the north. It's not super cold actually. It's a little bit um below average, maybe about my maybe by about maybe five to ten degrees. Maybe a couple of isolated spots towards the northeast where we could get fifteen to twenty, maybe even thirty degrees below average at a point. But even so, it's not that impressive. Alright, so we'll go ahead and throw this into a loop here. For the most part, we're going to be looking at pretty much the same thing here. Right now, we're looking backwards, actually, and now we're going forward. So here's that surge of warm air coming in towards the end of the week, and then we're going to be in this slightly weird pattern, but it's mostly going to look like a, a negative PNA dominant type of system or type of setup here. Look at this big surge of cold air that GFS has coming into the northeast towards the middle of the week. And then over towards the end, of, towards the uh, start, maybe about two weeks out from now, that's when we get a big push of cold air into the southeast now. And we're going to be pushing probably towards the middle of the month, maybe 20 to 30 degrees below average over this region here. Here's that big rush of warm air that's coming in towards the end of this week, and then next week there's one more rush of that. And then here comes the cold air trying to lock itself back in over the entire country as a whole here, especially towards the eastern half here. You can almost kind of see it as it pushes in from uh, central Canada here. So let's go ahead and now take a look at what the precipitation looks like over these areas. For, for both the GFS and the Euro. These are the main ones I like to uh, compare right now. And this is where we'll really start to see that uh, precipitation threat over, over, um, yeah, can't get my words out, over the uh, Tennessee Valley here and towards the Ohio Valley. Hence why I'm pretty concerned about a flood threat over this region. We'll start out with the Euro here, if it'll load. Looks like we should be ready to go here. All right, there it is. Always got to look for that little green line there. Okay. So again, here's our uh, here's our current system moving out right now. Most of the snow's staying north of the border. Then here comes our next big system here, bringing snow into the northwest. And then pretty much from that point, it's pretty benign. Not a lot of moisture to really work with to uh, get more snow towards the Midwest here. Some flurries are probably possible, but beyond that, I'm not really expecting a lot. Here's some uh, isolated showers here and there towards the uh, Tennessee region. More rain to add on to the system that just came through. And this kind of matures a little bit. We draw in a little bit of moisture from the Gulf and even so, even the nice little moisture plume from the Pacific even. And this works its way over the eastern half of the country. A lot of areas will be seeing rain over this Saturday. But this will be a quick mover. And then on Sunday, looks like it could be a very similar situation. A little bit more rain to the south and east, if anything. Maybe even a couple, boom, couple rumbles of thunder here. A couple of boomers here and there. But mostly we're going to be concerned about a, a rain threat here, especially on Monday as well. But here's where we start to get a little bit more work. Things get a little bit more worrisome around this region. Get this little low that develops right here. Chance of a couple of severe storms. Again, not a robust severe setup. But this is tracking in a little bit of, mo little bit of additional moisture. And as a result leading to increased rainfall amounts around the Ohio and Tennessee valleys. We move this along. This goes into the northeast, 
and then we start to wait about a day or two and then the next storm system comes in pretty much does the same thing this one looks a little bit more robust but look where it's tracking over yet again and there's a lot of model agreement with this too and that's the part that I don't like is that we're seeing multiple systems over the same region over and over again over and uh, the fact that we're seeing this on both the GFS and the Euro operational runs that says a lot now GFS does have this a little bit colder looking than the uh, Euro of course GFS has a tendency to do that but even so the results rel look relatively the same snow is going to be a little bit too far north for areas that in the northeast that may be looking for it maybe towards the interior northeast we could get a little bit more snow but beyond that it's almost identical towards the sixth big rainmaker towards the uh, eastern half of the country cold air is a little bit further south and snow is possible a little bit into the interior northeast and maybe even a little bit closer to the coast We'll have to see how that progresses there but then again but then we look at these other short waves coming in a lot of the same areas i'm thinking the gfs slightly has more of an affinity towards a uh rain threat towards the so further south and then interestingly enough here this cold air pushes just far enough south and we have a little bit of lingering moisture to where we could get some snow in the appalachians here too euro's not showing that right now so Interesting dispute setting up here, and this is the uh, nor'easter that I was referring to when I was looking at the GFS earlier, just on the vorticity map. Right now, based off its current track, it's going to be a little bit too far off to the east to uh, really be effective for uh, the Long Island region, because this is typically the setup that ends up giving them their snow around New York City, around Rhode Island, New Jersey, areas like that. No, wait, hang on. There is some snow that looks like it comes in on the backside. Nothing significant as of right now, though. And then this jet stream tries to dig a little further south, and this ends up leading into what the operational is showing as a very interesting run, which will bring snow towards the Panhandle of Texas. Oklahoma City could even be involved in this. But, of course, at this point, we're at no, in uh, no man's land where we pretty much know nothing. So that's what we have going on right now. And there's also one other thing I need to bring up here. Today is November 30th. This is the last day of regular hurricane season. So we're going to take one last look at that. And I got some good news for you. There's nothing going on here. So this will be the uh, last uh, regular outlook for hurricane season course with it being the last day only if something major happens but I'm, which i'm highly doubtful at this point will we end up uh looking at a uh, tropical outlook here but i figured i'd just update you guys on that real quick this probably was a lengthy video i apologize for that but uh just figured i'd try to get us caught back up here before we start december if you did make it to the end of the video you're a real one for sure thank you appreciate you very much especially anyone who watched of course i appreciate you as well anyone who's been supporting the channel up to this point it's towards the end of the year and it's been it's been amazing the uh the kind of uh numbers we put up on the channel which has been great considering i literally started back in march but anyway this is the end of the video here if you liked what i did here drop me a like um let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Do you are you looking for a uh, above average or below average uh, December? Um, what do you think is going to happen in your area for winter? And uh, of course, I've noticed that uh, over seventy percent of you guys that watch these videos aren't subscribed. If you like what I'm doing here? You like seeing these forecasts? And you want to see more of them? What are you doing? Subscribe to my videos so that way uh, you can get notifications for every time that I post. Because I post often, and it's probably not going to change for a while since things look like they're going to be active still. So, definitely uh, subscribe so, I, so uh, you can stay up to date on the videos here. But anyway, 
This is the end of the video. This has been Tired Metalhead Weatherman. I will see you guys probably tomorrow afternoon. Maybe in the morning. We'll see what happens there. But either way, you guys have a good night, and I will see you soon. Thank you.